Hey friends, what's going on? So I want to answer a question a lot of you have written in, which is, you know, what do I use to record? My camera, my mic, and all that sort of thing. And uh, this is going to be a bit of a timely video because I'm about to move to a new house. So I thought this would be a good chance to answer the question, show you what I use, explain my recording setup, and also just sort of, you know, do a little bit of a time capsule video here. The two cameras I have, the wide one I'm talking to you in right now, which is a Sony ZV-1, and then this one right here, which is my iPad Pro which I use for zoomed in shots. And I also use this to collect audio. So the audio and the video from this iPad Pro is being recorded. This video is being recorded. I sync them together later in Premiere Pro or whatever editor, and I put them together. So for quick context on what my setup used to look like in the past, I've had a couple different phases. The first one back in 2013 was the basement at my house. I used some mirrorless camera we had. It wasn't great audio, and that was a means to an end. I just wanted to make videos. And uh, it was a couple years later when we were in a different house in Austin, Texas, I recorded in the garage. I got some lights that my parents got me. I had the Blue Yeti microphone that my parents got me as well. Again, thank you, Mom and Dad. I'm, I'm very glad you guys got me this without even me asking because it sort of gave me what I needed to sort of try these things out and, and run with it, right? That garage setup was fine. It was always hot and it was always late and I was always tired, right? But I, I, that's, that's my memory of those videos. Now, next up, I, we moved to an apartment and I had a garage again, but this was detached from the main unit. So I had to walk all the way down the hall, down the stairs, down the hall with all my gear. It was hot. It was loud. Um, but, you know, I had my stuff down there. I had a nice background. I really missed that clear background in some ways, right? Um, and that's what I did for a few years. But now, the last two years, I've been here. So let me time capsule this recording setup because I'm about to move to a new place and I'm sure I'll do another one of these videos in the future. But uh, let's sort of show you what it looks like. Let's go. All right, so here is my office space. This has been the last two years. So 2019, 2020, and into 2021. Basically, I sit in that chair. This is the desk I work at normally. But when I record, uh, what I've been doing the last year or so really, is I sit here, get my notes all ready, okay? So I'm gonna refer to this. Now this thing is my iPad, it's an iPad Pro. It's the uh, 2018 version. So it's a couple of generations old at this point, but it, uh, it does a job really well. What I love about this is I can basically go to my camera and then turn it to front facing mode. And then here I can sit and hold a guitar. And I basically, you know, I, and also I can like adjust the, um, the angle, which is super, super helpful. And what I love about the iPad camera is it does not necessarily have the best quality. It's only seven megapixels. The new one that just came out is 12 megapixels. But what I love about it is it just keeps everything in focus, right? All right, and here's what it looks like when everything is recording. So I have my guitar. You can see I can back up if I need to. I can adjust this angle if I needed to. And whenever I've used a nicer camera for a head-on shot to record myself, what'll typically happen is it'll be very picky about its focus. It'll keep my left hand, my fretting hand in focus, but my strumming hand isn't. Or it'll keep my strumming hand in focus and my fretting hand isn't. Or it'll focus on my face or my beard or something. That was a big frustration I had when I tried to go up market with a really nice camera. So instead, I've dialed it back I've used the iPad for my sort of zoomed in shots. It just, it keeps everything in focus. I love it. It just, I mean, this is one of those things where it just works. And I'm very proud. Apple pisses me off sometimes. They frustrate me sometimes with certain decisions, but this is one thing I just really, really value and admire and find helpful um, as a content creator. Now about this camera, this is a Sony uh, ZV-1. I think it just came out six months ago. I use this for the wide shots I do. So I'll turn it on. Um, I usually record at the end of my recording session, I'll do the intro. Hey everyone, what's up? Today I'm going to teach you this song, you know, check out this PDF, blah, 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 blah. At that point, I've already recorded the actual lesson. So basically I have two cameras. This is the main one. And this is the sort of one I use just for wide shots, unless it happens to be a wide video. Now, the microphone I use is a hype mic. This costs 350 bucks. And uh, what I used to use was... This one right here, the, the blue Yeti or the Yeti. I never know the brand. Is it Yeti or is it blue? But uh, this is about 120. I really recommend this one. If you're ever interested in getting into recording or just sounding better on your Zoom calls for work or whatever, totally recommend that one. You just plug it in your computer and it, it sounds great. What I didn't like about it though, is it requires the thing you plug it into to have power, okay? So that means if you're plugging it into your phone or your iPad, you have to have the iPad plugged into power at the same time. And as you can imagine, that's a problem because there's a shortage of ports. So then what I had to do is get some dongle where the power and the microphone were going into the same dongle that went into there. And that was, and then plug in the, the iPad. That was a deal breaker for me, especially in my prior setup, which was in a, a garage in an apartment separate from my main living area. 
that really sucked to have to go downstairs, bring my power cord for my computer to plug in the thing. It was just horrible. So this one, a little bit more money, but I love that it just basically, you can plug it into USB-C, you can plug it into Lightning, which my iPhone has, you can plug it into micro USB, which a lot of um, other phones have as well. So a um, big fan of this. Um, I can talk about this in a separate video. My only complaint about this mic is the gain. It's not necessarily super easy to make sure you're at that sweet spot. Whereas the Yeti, I never had to think about this. But this one, basically when you're recording, the gr yellow light or green light will, will sort of pulse as you make noise. And if it's pulsing too much, it's too much gain. If it's not pulsing enough, um, it's not enough gain. And you gotta find that sweet spot. Otherwise your, your sound could be just too, too, too soft. Even if you turn it up in post-production or it could be way too loud, which means that it's just too compressed or whatever. This is the microphone I'm talking about. So as I talk, you can see that green light pulsing, right? If I was to turn it up, and it would look like that. You get two dots, three dots. I fear this is gonna to be too much gain, right? And I can turn it down. And if you turn it down, it sounds like this. So let me turn it back up. You want like a little bit pulsing, but not too much. I find if you ever see that second dot, it's too much. So I'm not really an audio expert, but uh, yeah, I'll pretty much put this right here. I will sit here, record into this. Usually my, my lessons are 20 to 40 minutes of footage on here. I edit those down to about 15 or 20 minutes at the end of the day. And I'll just tack on whatever I use on my wide wide shot over there with the Sony ZV-1. And then finally, we have this sort of wide camera right here, which is where I am recording uh, the wide shot. And you can sort of see myself. So that's what it looks like when everything is firing on all cylinders. So um, that's how I've been recording things the past, uh, past couple years. And again, I like this because I can refer to my notes and they're not necessarily on camera, even though I'm holding a guitar right here. So it's just a really nice setup. Um, at the end of the day, I can move this. I love the iPad Pro. I mean, you just close it. Um, I mean, I take this all. I, I'll take this out when I'll occasionally eat lunch and just get some work done. You know, from a restaurant after I eat or something, just to change it up. I'm working from home now. It's like those little things are are nice, but the iPad Pro is great. All right, so one final thing I wanted to add to this video, and that is the topic of lighting, which is super important and has to do with gear in certain sense, right? So I will say, just to cut to the chase, the best lighting I have found for this particular space is to use my big natural, my big windows here to get natural light, and that looks like this. Pull up my camera, here's where I'm sitting, that's the camera, but here is a big, big window, which is really nice. So as long as I'm taping during the day, this is late, late afternoon. This is actually evening at seven o'clock during the summer. So you can see that light is actually not the strongest, but it's enough to light me right now. And it's, I think natural light is really hard to beat in my amateur experience. Now I also do have these lights right here, which are Elgato uh, Key Light Air, and they are helpful, but I'll say they don't, I'd rather use natural lighting, all things being equal. And let me show you what it looks like if I turn those lights on. So they're off right now, and now they're on. Now I can control the intensity. So this is 9%, this is 45%, this is 80%. This just feels like too much. I, I, th I, th I think these lights actually um, tend to be, like the sweet spot is like between five and 10%, and that's just too low. I I would like to invest in a better lighting, like a soft light, which doesn't have as harsh shadows. Once this gets up to 50%, I just think the shadows are too much um, and I wanna minimize my video editing. So I will use these lights in a pinch. Again, this is on, this is off, this is on. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if this is better than that. I think the natural shadows here are kind of nice. But then again, when you're doing close-ups of a guitar, you want things evenly lit probably. So anyway, um, the Key Light Airs, I'll put the link in there uh, in case any of y'all are interested. But um, lighting, you know, if you can use natural light, that's the best. Recording at night with these lights, it's just the, the look of the video isn't as good. So I generally try to avoid that. So uh, that's going to cover it for lighting. Um, it's an important thing. I wanted to include it in this video. All right, so that's gonna do it for this gear wrap up. You can find links for all the lights and mics and cameras and everything I mentioned in this video at this address, playsongnotes.com slash gear. And it'll also take you to Amazon and I'll put my affiliate links in there. So if you buy it through there, uh, if you're gonna buy it anyway, it helps me if you buy it through those links, but no pressure, of course. Just wanted to share this. So thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll keep you all posted as I set up my next gear situation for my next house. I'm pretty excited about what's to come there. So until the next one, y'all, I'll see you around. Bye-bye.